Avenging a blowout loss to the Cavaliers by traveling to Oklahoma and snatching a W, the now 8-2 Warriors closed out a seemingly impossible five-game road trip with a 4-1 record. After Chet Holmgren went down, the Warriors took advantage by building up a 30-point lead. While the Thunder cut it down to single digits late, Draymond and Steph taking over when it mattered most put it to bed, with Curry reminding everyone, including SGA, about his generational 2016 dagger in OKC. Stay tuned. Right quick, almost 80% of you watching right now are not subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter for a follow back. One of the many reasons displaying why Curry is the greatest shooter that's ever lived is the fact that he has the most games in NBA history with at least 7 three-pointers made with 135. Insanely. That's a full 85 more than the second-ranked Klay Thompson. That gap alone is a full 35 games more with 7 plus triples than any other player, which is just mind-boggling. SC30 had his best night of the year scoring-wise, but he continued his amazing season on the defensive end. Down the stretch to help seal it, first Steph sprung onto Case and Wallace as the low man to force a bad miss, and a few possessions later he'd rotate over to Jalen Williams to clog the baseline and force a turnover. This led to Melton pushing, swinging a Wiggins, and Andrew finding Stefan who up faked to get Dort flying by before hitting both the triple and the iconic Night Night Selly. Guy is unreal. Shea Gilgis Alexander had an Instagram post around a year ago at this time, completely throwing shade at Curry with practically every slide in the post of him getting the better of Stefan. Around 350 days later, and Steph and the Dubs would get revenge. Curry went off for a season-high 36 points, but on a night where he had it flowing in terms of that bucket getting, Steve Kerr spoke on his dime dropping. Steph was incredible. I mean, um, great rhythm. Uh, the impact that he made with his passing, with uh, even when he wasn't making shots, he was pulling defenders with him, and that opened up the whole offense. And uh, those second and third quarters were really beautiful. Uh, to watch, and obviously we had to go back to him pretty early. Um, looked like it was going to be a night where we could keep him under 30 uh, minutes again. And uh, and then obviously OKC made that big run to start the fourth, and, and Steph did a, a great job of coming back in and closing it when, when it got a little dicey. Chet Holmgren suffered a gruesome injury where he fell on his hip, scarily limping off. Chet couldn't put any weight on his right leg, and unfortunately he'll be out 8-10 to 10 weeks with a pelvic fracture. Holmgren did stay lighthearted about the situation afterwards, tweeting, I can't believe this MF still made the layup. WTF, I'm pissed. Prayers to Chet on a smooth recovery. Draymond had an eventful evening, which included taking a swing at Lou Dort after getting tangled up with him, but primarily Green was the main playmaker for the Warriors, especially in the final stages. The point forward finished with 11 assists in this one, which more than doubled the total of anyone on the Oklahoma City Thunder. Only trailing Jokic and LeBron, among non-point guards, Draymond has the third most games with at least 10 assists of all time. Post-game in OKC, Draymond explained how the Warriors' depth gives them more flexibility with their lineup combinations. You know, oftentimes when you're talking about depth, you're talking about how deep you can go and obviously, you know, just the short amount of guys you can play, but the main reason depth is important because you, if you remember last year, Steph and Steve talking about the lineups and just kind of running out of options of lineups that we can go to. And this year is the total opposite. You know, if we need to go small, we can go small. We need to put a shooting lineup out there. We can put a shooting lineup. We need to put a defensive lineup. We can put a defensive lineup. We need to put a big lineup. We can put a big lineup. Definitely makes a difference in a night like tonight where, you know, they played five guards all night pretty much. It's good we're able to have that adaptability. D'Anthony Melton was a machine from deep range as he torched the Thunder with a game's second most only behind Steph of five triples. He made an incredibly efficient five of his eight shots from beyond the arc and also finished with a game-high 10 rebounds. Melton's 19 points came on 70% true shooting, and on top of all that, he snatched three steals. It was a monster night for Melton in a big spot, as in this outing, he earned his position in the starting five. Here's Kerr's full explanation on the move to keep DeAnthony in the starting five moving forward. Uh, you started Melton. Was that matchups based, or, or did you just really kind of want to see him? In the I, I, I like this lineup with Melt. Um, I anticipate doing it again um, Tuesday. Um, I think it gives us a really good two-way lineup. You saw what he can do at both ends. Uh, starts the game out with a beautiful assist. Uh, he's a really good passer, excellent three-point shooter, um, but a really good on-ball defender as well. So 
you know, Melton, in the starting lineup is something we've talked about a lot, uh, you know, in camp and um, here in the early going, and really liked it, and um, I, I think it, it makes a lot of sense for us. So it sounds to me like you, you, I mean, obviously you can adjust, but you would like this. To I would like, I would like for for that starting group that was out there tonight. I would like for that group to be our our group going forward. I think uh, JK has shown how important he is to us off the bench. 20 points tonight, uh, some huge plays. Um, he seems to really fit into that role well. Um, and we're, we're you know looking for really good defense to start the game. And that lineup gives us two on-ball defenders with Wiggs and, and Melt, and then two bigs with Draymond and, and, and Trace. So, um, I think we'll stay with it, and we'll, you know, we'll see, uh, see how it goes. Preparing for Clay Thompson's return, the Splash Brothers and Curry and Thompson had completely opposing thoughts about what's in store for Tuesday night. What do you think Tuesday is going to be like? We've had homecomings before, but nothing like this with the uh, level of impact and. <clears throat> The brand of Clay in the Bay Area is something that I don't know if any word I or way I explain it will do it justice. We obviously have a game to play, so you want to make sure you're locked in mentally on that. But he deserves um, the celebration and the, the, the welcome that he's going to get. And then, like I talked about before, it would be a great opportunity to reflect on all the memories that we had. I don't want to be too crazy where it's not. We, it's not a you know, memorial or like a bitch. It's like, you know, we're still talking about basketball and life, but we want to enjoy the moment of, you know, of getting the celebration that he deserves. And however it plays out, uh, I just hope he feels the love because he deserves it. Has it been weird for you to see him not, you know, in a Maverick shirt? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like every teammate that you have a history with, for sure. Clay is just. I mean, uh, the tenure we played with for 13 years, so it definitely is different. Uh, and it's weird seeing 31. I hate that. Meanwhile, just what are the initial feelings about going back to Golden State, a place you played for 13 seasons? Um, so, what are those initial emotions? It'd be good to see people that you grinded with, obviously. But uh, to me, it's just another regular season game in November. Obviously, there's bigger implications with the NBA Cup. So uh, that's what's on our mind, is in my mind, is just to win that because I, I haven't been a part of it yet. I know it's young, but uh, it'll be fun to play for that title. Yeah. Do you think it'll be difficult to kind of compartmentalize just everything that you, you're probably going to feel going into that arena um, and actually playing in the game? No, I don't think so. I've been doing this a long time, and basketball is basketball. You, uh, uh, were, were you surprised that they're giving out the captain's hats? I guess it's a good thing for the fans, so kudos to them. Uh, what are your thoughts on him uh, as a potential matchup? Like, since you're familiar, obviously, with like kind of the, the philosophy, the play style, uh, what's most important? Uh, you know, when you're kind of flipping that perspective, uh, entering the matchup against him. Probably share my knowledge with my teammates and coaches, and try and limit what they do well. Obviously, a high volume three point shooting team and uh, switch a ton on defense. So, we'll uh, go into Tuesday trying to counteract those two aspects. This was your boy D Flow, and I'll see you next video.